Welcome back to this course on using Git for version controlling your research projects. Alright, so far we have been looking at how to work on your own local machine. So you have created repositories, you have made changes to them, you have been able to revert changes to them. We already talked about checking out older versions of the project. Um, talked about relative references, absolute references using commit shas and exploring git history talked about a lot of commands git diff git log git status git commit git add so these are all done in the local machine right so far we have never um, worked outside this machine but here's a scenario so let's say you're working on a research project um, and this is like maybe a latex paper uh, describing the results of your experiments that you're writing or you could be working on a let's say a scientific code um, in the language C, C++ or Fortran which are the most common scientific computing languages. Python's catching up nowadays too. So you could be working on any of these projects on your work machine right and sometimes uh, suddenly let's say you have to um, uh, work uh, elsewhere of your workstation let's say you go home and uh, you, or maybe you're working from home one day and you want to uh, have the codes available on your local machine and run some quick simulations or you may be on the way to a conference um, and you may not have internet connection and you still want to like try out all the latest version of the codes that you've been working on right so this is a co quite a common scenario there is yet another possibility you could be working with a collaborator and that's fairly common for how research projects work nowadays. Nobody works on their own, um, at least uh, outside of your own individual PhD topic um, for large scale research projects, you always have a collaborator. And the collaborator may be collaborating on the same kind of, or the same code. Maybe he is working on a different module, but the code base he is, uh, or the he or she is contributing to the, to the same project, okay? So this can happen. So, um, and therefore we have to see how we can handle this uh, all these scenarios where you are not restricted to working um, from one machine um, okay and the easiest way or the quickest way is to use something called remotes so these are remote repositories which you designate um, as a centralized place for hosting your code it doesn't have to be that way git is a distributed version control system but um, by convention, uh, a centralized web service, a web hosting service uh, is uh, considered to be, um, can be considered or can be designated to be a remote repository for handling all the changes, um, for handling all the projects uh, code. For example, you could work on your home machine and then push all the changes from your home machine just before you are leaving um, to work. Okay. And then when you get get on, uh, when you get in to work, then you can just pull all the changes from this remote repository. Similarly, when you're working with a collaborator, you could be pushing changes uh, to the centralized web repository, and the collaborator could be pulling the changes and pushing their own changes, which you will then pull. So this remote, the idea of remote is quite helpful. Um, and this can be deemed as a, as a central place to host your code. And there are various code hosting services which work on Git. And a popular one among them is GitHub. This is a, a fairly popular service uh, where you can create repositories and you can connect uh, various repositories um, from your local machine. Okay, this is for example my PhD thesis and this is all the late tech code that I wrote as part of my PhD thesis here at Imperial, right? So that is one thing. Again, I have to remind you that this chapter or this uh, video is based on um, lesson number seven um, in the software carpentry's notes and that is titled uh, Remotes in GitHub. So you can follow along um, at your own pace, right? So let's see how we can use this remote repositories, right? So there are other popular services. Um, Bitbucket is one of them. Um, the advantage with Bitbucket um, is 
you can get you get to do private repositories that is repositories which you can um, keep internal or hidden from the public view until you are ready to push the code and even if you're not ready to push the code um, to the public forever that's also okay with them i think they allow up to like four or five private repositories um, we'll have to check the details for that um, the uh, advantage with github uh, is that it's very popular and it's in fact nowadays like considered to be the go-to solution uh, for such remote code uh, git based code hosting um, if you are an imperial student uh, or I think even staff member, I'm not sure about this, but I think if you are an imperial student or a student uh, of some other university elsewhere, then you can request uh, access to an education pack, uh, which allows you um, um, you to create private repositories. And that's what I have done for my PhD thesis, which is uh, a private repository. Uh, it says that it's a private repository right here so that uh, other people cannot see my source code yet. Um, all right so so far we have been working on our local machine uh, and um, that is in this uh, repository is called planets and we have been talking about the file mars.txt and we have made a set of changes to the mars.txt file let's see how we can um, get all these changes onto the central code hosting service uh, i'm going to demonstrate uh, this using um, github so let me close the speed bucket uh, page so for creating a new repository, uh, you log in with your own account. So if you have not created an account, I encourage you to start creating an account, um, sign up for a new account, and then you will have um, a login credential. So I've already logged in to my login account here, um, to my GitHub account here. And um, once you are logged in, at the, at the top right corner, you can hit the plus button, and it says new repository. So you select that option for creating a new repository and um, give it a repository name. Now, this name can be anything, uh, any valid alphanumerical character will work. Um, but I think it is helpful for me to remember at least uh, for the repository to match the repository name on your local machine so that everywhere it reminds you that you're working on this particular project. So if your project has a more descriptive name, you can certainly use that. But I would really um, encourage you to keep all the names synced. So you can use any name here, but um, for the sake of being uh, syn in synchronism, just in our minds, uh, we'll use planets, um, the same name as the local repository. You can see that I have now this option to uh, create a public as well as a private repository. I can choose between them. Um, when you're creating a new github account for the first time you may not have this option or you may have this option and they'll uh, probably ask you to make a payment through a credit card or something like that uh, but you can always apply for this uh, education pack if you're a student at imperial um, or elsewhere uh, student elsewhere. so uh, but the default option is public and i think public is fine for this type of for the project that we are working with and uh, let's create this repository once you do that uh, github gives you a new page uh, and gives you some instructions on how to handle um, this repository and how to interact with this repository from your command line so it says that to create a new repository from the command line follow these instructions in fact we have done most of these instructions right i mean this is assuming that you don't have a repository ready to push but we do in fact have a repository ready to push um, so it says so we can follow the instructions pushing an existing repository from the command line okay and there are two options here um, we can either do like an ssh uh, option or a https option if you are uh, brand new uh, to the world of command line interfaces or if you have never used ssh before i uh, suggest that for the time being we'll at least stick with uh, for the time being at least we'll stick with uh, https uh, which should work seamlessly, uh, hopefully. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you have already set up an SSH access key, then you can use the SSH protocol. Uh, it needs like an SSH um, agent uh, to be set up and, uh, and an, an SSH um, authentication to be set up uh, on each machine that you're working on. Um, basically, it's like a trust mechanism. SSH uh, is like secure shell uh, hosting. Um, so I think um, 
it requires some form of trust on the machine that you are working with uh, otherwise you can use HTTPS which will just ask you to log in with your credentials on Windows machine the credentials are saved there is like a github credential manager which saves it automatically uh, on Linux and Mac uh, I think they may ask you to enter your username and password each time uh, but there are workarounds for that uh, to avoid entering the username and password every time and you may just search online for this but uh, here we're going to just demonstrate the basics um, so we already have this repository that we can add so I'm going to copy this line and then go to the terminal and start pasting that line we just added now this is the command git remote add origin and followed by the URL to our repository this is the public facing URL that anybody in the world on their web browser can navigate to and see our code okay uh, let me explain uh, what this command does git remote says okay we are now going to deal something with the remote repository and the next command says the next word says what we are doing with it so we are adding a new remote and this remote is by convention called origin you don't need to name it origin this is like a local alias for your remote repository so the remote will still be officially called in uh, planets.git or planets that will be the name of the remote uh, repository in fact you can see that's the name of the remote repository on github but there is like a local mirror of this remote repository uh, which needs to be referenced to by the local version of git that you're working on and that is by convention named origin you can certainly name it anything else but by convention it's named origin so i'm going to stick with the convention here so once i do that it says that the remote repository has been added now we can certainly do the next step go back to the browser and do this pushing step but before uh, we do that let me uh, show you whether the remote is added successfully or not so you can do that by using git remote uh, with the dash v option so if you do that then we say that okay for fetching new changes that's the remote url that is going to use and its local alias uh, or a pointer to that remote URL is named origin. So this origin points to this URL for fetching operation and for pushing operation, uh, it's the same URL. Now, you may be confused why are we repeating this information? It is because certain uh, repositories uh, do not give you right access. So you may not have access to the push uh, repository, certain public projects like the Linux kernel or something, but um, they may have a public facing repository which you can fetch from onto your local machine. So uh, you could, and, uh, and you could also fetch from one URL and push to another URL if, you, if needed. But that is all getting a little bit complicated. But for now, let's keep the things simple. The fetch and the push URLs are the same, okay? So now what I'm going to do is copy the next line which says git push minus u origin master it says that take my master branch take everything in it and push it to this remote repository pointer called origin and dash u says follow all the updates to this master branch so the next time i do not have to enter this whole command so I can just do git push the next time and it will remember that it's pushing from the master branch to the origin branch and it will push to the URL uh, which the origin branch origin points to, right? So it's a one-time setup uh, in this way, git push dash u um, origin master and if you are on Windows, it should bring up something like this dialog box where you can enter your GitHub credentials and this will uh, typically happen every few hours um, if you're con constantly using git and if you're doing pushing and pulling you may not see this dialog box pop up quite often um, and this dialog box is also specific to windows um, this github uh, or git login credential manager uh, graphical interface is a windows specific one on a mac or a linux machine if you are using https protocol then you will uh, typically be asked your username and password uh, for entering your username and password right on the command line interface okay so on windows i can use the graphical user interface and i've typed my username and password uh, to github and it should now say okay there's some compression going on okay it'll compress all the information that needs to be sent and it will uh, say okay i've pushed it to this remote to this url 
and it will say that a new branch has been set in the remote repository and that branch is titled master and my local branch is titled master and the local branch of master is already set up to track the remote branch of the master so anytime i push it will push the master branch of my local repository to the master branch of my remote repository similarly anytime i pull i will by default pull from the master branch of the remote repository to the master branch of my local repository so the next time i make some changes i do not have to do git push dash u origin master i can simply do git push similarly next time i want to maybe you went home and you did some changes there you push to the remote and you come to the work the next day you can simply do a pull so we're going to demonstrate all of that in detail but this is like an introduction class to the um, remotes in github um, with this uh, i think uh, we can um, stop this video but before i leave you um, uh, let me also show how uh, by refreshing this page we can see our entire source code and in fact the whole history gets copied over so it's the same interface to git but it's like a web interface you can view it that way too so you can see all the changes that have happened at each commit and github has like a nice diffing um, interface where you click on the commit and it shows what has uh, what has been changed so if it's an addition it will show it as with a green highlight and if it's a removal of a line it will show it as a red highlight with a with a minus symbol right to there so yeah so that's uh, um, how the remotes work uh, in git and, and by using github um, i encourage you to go uh, all the way to the bottom of this page and start looking at uh, some of the exercises here um, and that will um, offer more insight into how the remotes work um, so I encourage you to do that. So I think with that we can um, end this uh, video. So see you in the next one